I've done a few tutorials about specific parts of modding, but today I wanted to go beyond just the specifics of making mods themselves for Empire at War to covering advice for modding more generally. I've been making mods for 15 years across a couple games, including Empire at War and Sins of a Solar Empire, so there's a few things I've learned to do better or wish that I'd known when I started, which hopefully some people will find helpful. Or for fans of Empire at War Expanded or Ascendancy, it may just help shed some light on how and why we make certain decisions. Today we're going to talk about 5 key things you should know if you want to get started in modding, whether it's for Empire at War or for any other game. The first and probably most important thing for anyone starting out is to start out small. It's really easy to start out with a project with a ton of really large plans for what you'd like to do, but it's important to turn that into a series of shorter term, achievable goals. A lot of mods unfortunately never make it to release, and one of the primary reasons why is because mods tend to start with a super broad goal in mind, rather than figuring out what you need first and going from there. If you're starting a unit add-on mod in an RTS game, for example, rather than having a huge list of things to add, start with one thing and expand that list from there. There's nothing wrong with having longer term goals, but try to avoid scope creep within any particular set of changes. It's also important to make sure you don't plan anything you aren't willing to learn how to do personally. I've seen a lot of instances where someone will come into a community and has a huge mod as their first project because they've had some great idea, like putting some other franchise in the game, and then they'll sit and wait for a big team to come along and do all the work under their fantastic leadership with all the great ideas. Once you have something to show off and demonstrate you know at least part of what you're doing, you may be able to recruit some help, or be able to start off with a group willing to learn together. But there's really no such thing as just an ideas guy within mod teams, and generally mod leaders who don't do any of the actual work don't understand the engine they're working with enough to properly plan anything anyways. No one wants to do all the work to execute someone else's vision who can't contribute and doesn't understand how the game they're modding works. In most cases, if there's some type of thing you want done, you'll need to be willing to learn how to do it yourself at least to some extent. Often there will be members of a given modding community who are more than happy to help teach you how stuff works, but you have to be willing to work within every area you want to see progress in, whether that's coding, art, or whatever else. There's nothing wrong with starting a mod focusing on one particular area, like say your skill is in coding in whatever way that game takes, so you work on fleshing out some of the gameplay with existing assets. That'll potentially make it a lot easier to find someone who has the skills in, say, 3D art who can come in and supplement what you're doing, or if you even just start off doing some very basic modeling yourself, you may find that it's a skill you can learn. Right now, there are a lot of tools available like Blender, which have a ton of tutorials on how to do pretty much everything you could want to do in them, so you can usually at least get started with a pretty low buy-in level. It's Blender's free, there are free versions of image editors, so usually you'll be able to find some sort of tool to quickly at least attempt whatever you need to do. Again, there's nothing wrong with trying to recruit help, and you may get other people interested in joining up to help out, but that's usually not going to be until you've got the basics figured out yourself. The second important point is basically the saying, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. If projects starting out with too big of a scope is the main thing that kills off mods, the next most common reason is an unwillingness to release something until it's seen internally as absolutely perfect. First off, that's never going to happen. You're always going to find stuff that you want to change. You can spend years and years refining something, and it'll never be fully finished or fully polished. Mods don't have deadlines to keep or budgets to stay under like actual games, so it's easy to get lost in a cycle of doing and redoing the same work for years, sometimes even a decade or more, without a single release to show for it. Actually, some video games have the same problem too, but essentially what it boils down to is that a mod you can play is always going to be better than a mod you can't. If hype builds up too much, that can push expectations way beyond what further polishing can accomplish as well. Now, this doesn't mean I'm saying push out broken crap, but it means to figure out what your reasonable limits are, and what reasonable expectations are. Often the first couple weeks after a release are when some of the best work happens. That's when new players are able to interact with your work for the first time with fresh eyes, and often will catch things that no reasonable amount of further testing by just developers could do. When we do a release with Empire War Expanded, we're not saying this is perfect, we're saying we're confident this is good, and that we're at the point where it'll get better faster if we have some extra feedback. Having more iterative releases like this, with smaller stretch goals, also means when some underlying assumption or system is wrong and broken, you're much more likely to catch it earlier on before you've built up extra levels of mechanics or features on top of a prior assumption that is going to have to be reworked later. Now maybe this will mean there are a couple people who are put off who wouldn't have been if you'd waited another 6 months, but then you and others wouldn't be able to enjoy your creation for those extra months, 
and the extra downstream improvements from that feedback would be gone as well. You're almost never going to get things absolutely right the first time. Next up we have two related points, so even though they're kind of different, we'll talk about them together. Third is to be creative, and fourth is to do what you think is interesting. Unlike with proper game development, there's no need to ensure you appeal to a particularly wide market, which gives a freedom to take risks that can often be too scary for a game with a budget that needs to be made back. If you have a system, mechanic, or whatever else you want to try where you're not sure if it'll go over well, give it a shot. You can always roll it back. If you end up not liking it while still in development, you can roll it back then, but even if you ship a release with something that you end up not liking, if you're doing iterative releases like what we talked about in point two, you can easily just remove it in the next release. Ultimately, your goal should be to put in things that you enjoy. Making a mod other people like is a great feeling, but if you're just making a mod to appeal to the biggest number of people, you're much more likely to lose interest in what you're doing yourself. Community feedback is great to have since it can help find bugs, new ideas, or even flaws with something you may not have considered, but it should never override what the people actually making the project want to get out of it. And furthermore, if you are bought into an idea already or if there's something you've already done, don't be too precious with it. If it needs to be removed, it's better to remove it when you can, rather than keep building on top of it and having to do even bigger reworks later. Crucially, I do want to point out that if and when you do have other people working on the mod, the you there is inclusive. The you, who is deciding what actually works for the project or not, should never be exclusively one person. If there's an area that someone works on within the team that is pretty much entirely their thing to work on, they should probably get a bit bigger of a say because they're the ones who actually have to implement it. But generally, you want to make sure that to some extent, everyone involved in the project is able to get their voice heard. And well as a team grows, it's impossible to have everyone love every single decision, you can generally find a system that involves enough compromise between everyone that everyone will at least be on the same page and understand that if they don't get their way here, then something that's more important to them later will probably reflect more of what they want. At the end of the day, people are people, so there's always going to be some chance for interpersonal conflict, but there are ways to kind of mitigate that. And that brings us to our final and most important point. Do it to have fun. More important than even getting the mod itself is the fun of actually making it. You're not always going to think your mod is great to play. A lot of times it's going to be broken, or something is just not going to work out, especially when unexpected bugs come up or the game you're modding decides to throw a limitation in your face. The key there is to just make sure the stuff you're doing is going to be done because you enjoy the work. There are a lot of things that can take away from that enjoyment, whether it's negative feedback, some kind of drama, or whatever else, but sometimes it's best to just step back and say it's not worth it. Modding is, above anything else, a hobby. It's supposed to be fun, so when something stops being fun, just stop doing that thing until it becomes fun again. You're not beholden to anyone, so you always have the ability to step back. If you're working as part of a team, try not to do this in a way that screws over the rest of the team, where, like, if you have some files that no one else has, try to send those files to someone else. But if you aren't enjoying what you're doing, there's nothing wrong with taking a break or stopping altogether if that's what it comes to. One of our mods, Ascendancy for Sins of a Solar Empire, hasn't had a release in quite some time, and a large part of that is just because I hate working with the tools that were available. So I haven't worked with them, and Evil Bob the Bob, one of the team members on Empire War Expanded, has made a Blender plugin that makes it a lot easier to work with the game, so I'm back doing it now. In the interim, that has resulted in a few messages that were not especially nice, but I wasn't going to force myself into doing something that I didn't enjoy and something that was supposed to be a hobby. I hope that helps for anyone who's thinking about starting their own mods or maybe helps clarify some stuff on how mods work for people who are just interested in how these kinds of things are made. Either way, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, consider leaving a like or subscribing for more.